Hi everyone, welcome to STM PCB Academy. My name is Aviral. In the previous video, we talked about differential signals, its advantage over single ended signals with two factors that affects differential impedance. Now, in this video, I am going to discuss very popular differential signaling scheme, which is LVDS, also known as low voltage differential signaling. I will talk about LVDS's differential voltage, frequency, data rate, etc., and how it is better than differential signals along with couple of simulations on security topology explorer. So in short, I'm going to talk about everything a hardware designer should know about LVDS. So let's get started. Let's start with very first question. What is LVDS or low voltage differential signaling? So LVDS is high speed long distance digital interface for serial communication over two wires. That means we send or receive data one bit at a time. Now to understand LVDS signals electrically, we need to recall the working of differential signals from our last video. So differential signals contrast to traditional single ended signals in two transmission lines, which are complementary to each other. Anyways, so we send serial bits on these transmission lines and at the RX side, comparator will generate the output voltage. So this is the general differential signaling scheme which provide noise immunity and common mode rejection. And we have already seen this using PSPI simulations on last video. Now in case of LVDS transmitter, it consists of a current mode driver which provide a certain amount of current. So as per ANSI standards, it is 3.5 milliamps through the transmission lines of differential pairs. Now at receiver, there is a 100 ohm termination register, which is used to match the differential impedance of transmission line, which connects driver and receiver. Now, as you can see, this termination register also provide a path between complementary signals. And high input impedance of receiver cause the 3.5 milliampere current coming from driver to flow through this 100 ohm termination register and resulting in 350 millivolt voltage difference between input terminal of receivers. Let's see these three cases to understand the working of LVDS model. So case one is which is a default case when we are not sending any bit on differential pair signals. So by default, we'll have 1.2 volt common voltage or common mode voltage at the differential line, as you can see in the waveform. Let's see the second case when positive MOSFETs are closed. So as soon as positive MOSFETs are closed, 3.5 milliamps of current will start flowing on differential pair and create 350 millivolt voltage difference between terminals of RX. And this sort of waveform will be formed. So where you will see a clearly rise on non-invertic terminal and it will rise up to 350 divided by 2 volt. And the invertic terminal will go low with the same voltage. Let's see case 3 when all the negative MOSFETs are closed and positive MOSFETs are open. Current 3.5 milliamps will flow in opposite direction. And the waveform on differential pair signals will be opposite. So as you have seen on case 2, inverting or complementary signal was going low and non-inverting or true signal was going high. In case of case 3, the exact opposite will happen. The true signal will go low to 350 divided by 2 millivolt and the complementary signal will go high for same voltage. Now in this, if we say true signal is V1 and complementary signal is V2, then V1 equal to V common plus 1 by 2 of V differential and V2 equal to V common minus 1 by 2 of V differential. So in this case, V common is 1.2 volt, which is the average of this waveform and V differential is 350 millivolt. All right. So two more things, then we'll go for the simulation part. Now, what will be the output of receiver? To derive that, we need to separate differential and common part from the signal. So as you can see, the common voltage will be at 1.2 volt and differential signal will swing between 
पॉइंट वन सेवन फाइव वोल्ट टू माइनस पॉइंट वन सेवन फाइव वोल्ट दैट मीन द टोटल स्विंग विल बी थ्री फिफ्टी मिली वोल्ट नो हेयर वॉट रिसीवर विल सी रिसीवर विल सी द डिफरेंस ऑफ इनकमिंग डिफरेंशियल वे फॉर्म्स दैट मीन्स द आउटपुट वोल्टेज विल बी इज इक्वल टू वी वन डिफरेंशियल माइनस वी टू डिफरेंशियल सो इन फर्स्ट हाफ साइकिल इट विल सी पॉइंट वन सेवन फाइव माइनस माइनस पॉइंट वन सेवन फाइव Now, if we we'll add this, it will be 0.35 volt, right? Now, let's see the other half cycle. So, on other half cycle, we'll see minus. So, V1 differential will be minus 0.175, and V2 differential will be 0.175. And if we we'll subtract that, we'll get minus 0.35 volt. All right. So, this will be the output of receiver side, and we'll see total 700 millivolt of swing. All right. So now let's see the quick demonstration of LVDS. For that, I am using Security Topology Explorer and IBS models of TI LVDS drivers and receiver. So I am using two chips from TI: DS LVDS one zero four seven and one zero four eight. All right. For that, open Topology Explorer first. And uh, this is the topology. And as you can see, we have a transmitter. This is differential signal of hundred point nine ohm differential impedance. We'll also have a hundred ohm termination registers, and we have discussed on whiteboard. And then at last we have receiver. Now where we need to enter all the information for these driver and receiver and trace properties. So you can enter all this information in this property section. As you can see here, I've assigned the IBIS file. If you click over this IB file, you can just add all the pin assignment, all the V differential voltage, time delay, etc. Right? I'll talk about this in very detail in next video. And similarly for trace impedance, you can add your stack up information here. And as you can see, as per this stack up, I'm getting differential impedance of 100.90. All right, and where we enter all the data rate and uh, bit pattern. For that, you have to click over Set Analysis option. Here, you'll find this option of adding data rate. So, as per data sheet of driver, this particular driver, which is DS LVDS one zero four seven, supports up to point four gigabits. All right, and here I am sending thirty two random bit patterns to get the simulation results. Here, you can set the corner frequency. So either you can go for fast mode, slow, or fast slow, slow fast. I'm going for typical as of now. And uh, another thing which is important to check connectivity. So before running the simulation, we have to check the connectivity between driver and receiver, right? It is properly connected or not. To do that, you have to just run this tool and click over check button. So from here it will verify. Okay, now it is ready. Otherwise you will get a cross sign here that driver or receivers. Pin two comma one is not connected to transmitters pin ten comma nine, right? But in our case, it is connected. Now let's run the simulation. So first, we just close this. To run the transient analysis, we have to just click over this start transient analysis. So as you can see, this is the waveform of R in one plus. Minus R in one minus. Okay, so this is the same waveform uh, that we have discussed for output of receiver. All right, and if you wanted to do the measurement, you have just right click and set up some marker. I just want to measure it vertically, and just set these marker at the edge of this one. If you want, you can just zoom in and set those marker precisely. But as you can see, the difference is. Very much close to 0.67 volt. All right. Similarly, if you want, the, these are the differential waveform which is coming at the input of receiver. All right. So similarly, you can measure these as well. And now, if I wanted to compare, so we have a transmission line between driver and receiver. I wanted to compare what I am sending and what I am receiving at the receiver side. All right. To do that, first I'm just going to disable these, and to zoom in, just click over here and drag it like this. Okay. Now I'm just going to compare R in one positive with 
driver positive which is d out 4 positive all right and as you can see we have a very clear time delay because of lengthy transmission line all right and if you want you can just measure it to do that you have just again go to the measure difference and this time disable the vertical okay and you can just drag it here i'm just setting it at peak here and we can see the difference so it is around 781.4 picosecond time delay between driver signal and receiver signal all right and similarly if you want you can analyze the i waveform for r in 1 plus and r in 1 minus to do that you have to just select the waveform and dis uh, just uncheck all the other waveforms and click over this i button once the i waveform is there you have to add the mask so this mask information you will get from either from the standard or sometime it is given on the data sheet you have to fill all these details okay and you will simply apply the mask and see your i waveform is within the limit or it is exceeding the limit so then you can do other changes on your design and you know make it working in your case all right so I'll, I'll explain that as well how to apply the mask and how to correct the waveform if we are getting some some kind of over limits so that's it for this uh, simulation part now in the next step i'm just going to talk about some standards for lbds which is very important to understand if we need to apply those for different applications so this is LBDS Honors Manual. I'll attach this document in the description. And here you'll find all the ANSI standards and their minimum and maximum limits for voltage, frequency, and time delay, etc. All right. So you can go through with this document. It's like five or six page. And it will give you enough brief about this standard. Another one is IEEE standard. And on page number 12 and page number 13, you'll get a detailed table of voltage current and frequency and time delay specifications so you can go through with this document as well and based on these two documents we basically decide which chip we need to use for our application like which standard is perfect fit for our application either we should go for ansi or ieee i'll attach the project document as well so let me know in the comment section if you want me to discuss how I have created this topology and how I've assigned the IBIS model or edited the IBIS models. So that's it for this video. I hope you got the overview of LVDS, how to do different measurements and what are different terminologies we use for LVDS, right? Let me know in the comment section in case of any doubt and see you in the next video.